please ignore my very messy craft table. I painted these before we went to the last market, um, thinking that I could get a little bit more done on them than I actually did. I think they are okay. We didn't sell very many of them, which kind of led to the belief in my theory that they weren't quite done exactly. So I'm going to add a few little decorations and I hope you'll see the difference. You may remember my ornament display tree for market. Well, these are the two types of branches that I was able to cut off of it. I still have a huge box full of them. So I'm going to turn these into little Christmas trees. One of these has very prickly branches and has a clear V formation. And so I'm just gonna trim that off. I'm gonna trim it very tightly at the bottom and then just tip it a little bit to clean up and accentuate the look of a pine tree. And this is gonna be seated inside of one of those beads as a little, we'll call it a little tree on the front porch. The other type of branch is much softer and it's much easier to turn into a circle, if you will. So this I'm going to just trim very close to the main wire running through it, leaving just enough that it has some nice full greenery. And then I'm going to twist them into circles and hot glue that to the front window of the cathedral. The next step is very easy. I am simply tying a nice bow out of some neutral fabric that I will glue to the wreath. Now I wanna add some roof lines to this church slash cathedral. So I've got the wide popsicle sticks and my um, kind of heavy duty scissors and I'm just trimming them and then I will hot glue them on. I'm going to do the same thing on the upper part of the cathedral as I'm doing on the lower part because I don't really have the ability to center the popsicle stick. What I'm doing is keeping it kind of pulling forward at the lower part so that it looks like it has a little bit of a leaned roof line. And then I did add a piece bridging these two on the bottom because I could kind of see from the front where it ended. So here is the final look of my updated house. Unfortunately, I never filmed me actually painting them, but the directions are on Pinterest for Do Dodson, and I will leave a link for that in the description below. Let me know, do you think the changes made an improvement? I bought these little ornament shapes off of Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description below. And I have these flamingo napkins. You've probably seen me use them before. They're one of my favorites. And we sell quite a lot of flamingos here in Jacksonville, Florida. And I'm gonna just cover those with DIY paints, liquid patina, using one of my DIY brushes. It's um, a great brush, sort of an all-purpose brush. And then I am just going to carefully lay down that top ply. I'm gonna completely let it dry. And because, you know, tis the season, I'm gonna add a little bit of glitter to these flamingos. My goal is to basically make this ornament look a little bit like a snow globe and the flamingos are inside. So I'm using one of my favorite glitters. I get all of my glitters from Glitter Love and this is a holographic one. I'll leave a link in the description below as well. Tapping some of it off, you can see I've got it on a, um, cardstock that is folded and that's so that if I try to keep it all on there I can just take that fold and then pour it right back into the container anything that hasn't been used so I don't waste a lot of glitter um, but I am trying to do this a little bit lately next off I want to add a little bit of a topper to these ornaments and I am using paper clay, which again, I'll leave a link in the description, and then Prima's Delicate Flora Mold. You can pick up this mold and other DIY projects on vintagebeedesign.com. There is lots of stock there, lots of great fun things. Uh, so this is just as simple as pushing it in, pulling off the excess. If you run into issues with it sticking, then my recommendation is to apply a little bit of cornstarch before you use the paper clay. I always find the best way to get it out of the mold is to flip the mold upside down and then sort of press and roll. And that is the easiest way to get it out to me. 
And so this is the original one that I tried. And then once I got it on there, I thought I thought the little balls and stuff would look really pretty with the flamingos, but in the end, it looked like too much. So I decided to pick a different mold from this same um, this same mold set. Uh, I just went with something a little bit different. The great thing is you can just ball the clay up and use it again. So instead of doing the one on the second level, I actually ended up doing the ones on the top. I found that they just fit better and had a better look overall for what I wanted to do. So then the process is just sort of, um, you know, pushing them in, pulling them out, pushing them in, pulling them out. And then I will use wood glue to glue these on the ornaments. So while these are glued on and drying, I am just gonna go ahead and paint the backs with Dixie Belle paint and the color, well, flamingo, because let's face it, these are some flamingos and it adds a nice touch of coral to the back. So if the ornament spins around, then you can see it. And I, I really think it matches beautifully. I also love the fact that you could write on the back of these ornaments, which you really couldn't do. It, it, it would be less attractive if they were just, you know, the natural wood on the back. So my goal was that if people wanted to use these as gift tags, it would also work for that. So I'm using a filbert brush, which is this little brush that kind of looks like it's um, sort of like an oval tip. And I am using the golden ticket. I just have this in a jar. And this is mostly dry, but still a little bit damp. And I am painting it. I'm actually going to do another step after this, but I kind of want to show you what it looks like up close. And I'm painting around the rim. And one of the things is I'm not being too terribly worried if I get some on the front or the back. If it, if it goes over the side, I just sort of smear it. And what I'm liking about that, I'm not worrying about being too precise. The filbert is helpful up here, but see, when I get it on there, I just sort of let it go. And it creates this little bit of gold around the, the edge here. And you can see it in some of these other ones too. And I actually feel like it gives a little bit more depth to the ornament. So I'm really liking how that is coming out. But this is where we are now at this part of the process. Okay, so now we're gonna try something brand new. This is a new product out by Dixie Bell. I guess it's been out before, but they just re-released it. And it's called Dixie Shine. I have this in gold and it's gonna work a lot like um, the, the papers, the, um, the gilding papers, but it's not nearly as expensive as that, or at least you get a lot more for the same amount of money. Okay, and then we've got this stick with me glue. I've not used this before, so let's read the instructions. Apply a thin, even layer of stick with me glue to the surface. When the glue is dry to transparent and sticky, approximately 15 minutes, smooth Dixie shine over the surface and burnish. Okay, so we're gonna try that on the tops of these flamingo ornaments using the gold Dixie Shine. Okay, I don't like to waste things, so I'm gonna use what's on the top of this lid that I'm probably gonna throw away. And I'm just gonna use um, a quarter inch flat. Uh, I guess this is a shader, so um, but a quarter inch. Gonna use it fairly liberally. I want a fair amount on here. I haven't decided exactly how much I want on here, so I guess I'll know after I do the first couple. I'm not gonna batch these out just yet because I've never used this product and I don't wanna waste a lot of it by you know doing it wrong the first time. So it's supposed to be transparent when it's ready. I'm gonna go ahead and do a couple. I'm gonna do one that's got a lot and one that's got maybe just sort of spot, spotty um, amounts where you can still see a lot of the original um, golden ticket. So I guess I'll do three of them and try to make each a little bit, a little bit different. And you know, we'll see, we'll see what we like. This one I'm just gonna do the 
top. So all everything that's sort of low, so highlighted areas and everything that's sort of low will just be regular. All right, I'm gonna just set these aside, let them sit for their 15 minutes. This is what it looks like when it comes out of the roll. It's a little sticky right there because it had tape on it, but it looks like this. Um, all right, I'll just wait a minute and then cut a little bit off. You can see you get quite a lot. We also have this in metallic silver and metallic red. I'm kind of excited about the red, but you know, we'll see. We're gonna start here. Okay, so the one that I did less on, it's starting to look pretty translucent to me. My baby kitty just jumped up here, so I gotta get that piece of fur off of there. So we're gonna try it and see what happens. Just gonna, let's see, you know, I'll use a stencil brush to burnish and see I might be doing it too early but it's starting to look transparent to me so or translucent to me so let's see what happens this is one we did less on Now, right away, I like that I'm not getting, I'm not getting gold everywhere. So I don't know. I think it came out, it came out pretty cool. I think. Let's let's see how the other ones do. I feel like maybe I just wish I had a little bit more, like right here, but maybe, maybe I didn't put enough right there because I was trying to be very. Uh, less is more. So let's just put a little bit more right here and let that dry at, or, you know, go translucent and see how it goes. I still have quite a bit um, on here. So let's just keep going, I guess. Use my sense brush. It feels like whenever I use gold leaf, I make the biggest messes ever. So this is far less messy. Yeah, I think I really like the subtle, the subtle shimmery look. And this last one. I like it. So this is my last one. And so basically I've got these three. This one I'm gonna try to add a little bit more right there, but I've done these three and look at how much that I have left out of this five inch um, part of the paper. And I've got all of this to do. And you see there's no messy gold leaf flakes anywhere to be seen. So I think I'm going to go ahead and, um, and finish up the rest of my flamingos. And before I go on and do the rest of these, I do want to show the difference in kind of what they look like with and without. So this is with the Dixie Shine and without the Dixie Shine. Let me know in the comments which you like better. Do you like the sort of more matte vintage gold or do you like the super sparkly gold? And I, I did do... Um, you know, flamingos without the glitter, too. This is the one I still want to do some here. But um, so you can see if you don't like the super sparkly glitter, how do you like it better? Okay, so I have, um, I think, 22 of these ornaments 
I am loving how this gold is working out. I looked at the Dixie Shine. I was looking for measurements. It is 100 feet long. That's how long the tube is. It's $21.95. And this is how much I used on those 22 ornaments. That is probably about 10 inches. So I'm going to say it went a really long way. So I have these mirrors that I've had for a really long time and they haven't sold. And getting inspired by the flamingo ornaments, I decided I'm going to try something. So I've gone ahead and I've gotten a couple more napkins out to do some decoupage. I've got my DIYs liquid patina. I am not even going to paint these, um, or do a base coat or anything. I'm just going to go ahead and throw some liquid patina down. I'm hoping that it'll create kind of a reflective quality behind the napkin. Um, this is an experiment. So what, do we, what is it we used to say? We make mistakes so you don't have to. All right, so I'm going to try to get this so that my flamingos are right here in the middle. And once this is down to one ply, it's very thin, so easy to break. So I'm just going to tap super gently, and then I'm going to let it dry before I attempt to get any of this excess paper off. I have no idea if this is going to work out. I can already see a little tearing. So I'm being real careful right there. Okay, on to the next one. Okay, so I got the paper off. There are a few tears around the edges, and I am not going to worry about that. I have a plan. So we'll see how it works out. But you can see um, it does have a little bit of a reflective quality, which is what I was hoping for. So now I'm going to go ahead and carefully put another layer, the top layer basically, of the liquid patina. It is right, it is dry right now. I want to do this very carefully, very gingerly. And then I'm going to add just a hint of glitter. I buy almost all of my glitter from Glitter Love, and uh, this is Hugs and Kisses. I think this is going to be the perfect glitter. Oh, and here is Peta, living up to her name. She's very comfortable with everything around here these days, so I'm going to have to get her scooched away so I can get to glitter in. There she goes. Okay, so I just opened this. I haven't used this one before, but I just want to be real careful with it. We don't have snow here in Florida, so we have to make do with glitter. How pretty is that? It's perfect. Right, so I've already become obsessed with this. So now I'm gonna add little bits of this stick with me um, in just some little delicate areas around the shells. I don't want a ton, but yes, I'm gonna use some more of the Dixie Shine on this and a little bit on the Flamingos area after they're dry as well. So I'm just gonna add this, let it get to a transparent quality, and then we will do a little bit more of the Dixie Shine. So now literally I'm just going to go around this whole mirror and pounce like this on the shells and I don't care that I'm not getting solid coverage. It's not what I want. I want this to be a hint and so it actually works out better for me that it there are voids on the paper uh, and then I will eventually do these across the flamingos as well. The more voiding on the paper the better for me because I don't want it solid. You can kind of see how I just did that right there. Oh my gosh, this is so pretty this way. I have hated these mirrors for so long. And now I think they're beautiful. Um, I am already addicted. This is the first time I've tried the Dixie Shine. And 
I expect to see a lot of it. Um, so pretty. I love the way it works with the reflective quality in the mirror. I think it finishes off that you can see the mirror in little tear out areas and it's just the right amount of touch. And here are my glamour shots of my flamingos. Let me know in the comments what you think. Of course, I did this on flamingos, but you could do it with so many other beautiful napkins. And there are a ton of different napkin ideas at vintagebedesign.com. This also, I have a whole box of dollar store, uh, dollar tree mirrors. I'm going to try it on those as well, I think. As always, if you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to hit like and subscribe and share this video. It really helps. I mean, we have a whole new employee that we have to take care of now. So, you know, sending kibble or love, that would be great. Uh, thanks, guys. We'll see you next week.